Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this video, we're going to be doing some quick gold style lettering here. Doing just a little quick little Happy Holidays card. Pretty straightforward. There aren't that many layers involved, as you can see over here on the right-hand side. Okay, let's go ahead and I'll do this one from scratch. Let's just close that file down. There we are. Now, I'm doing this video in Photoshop Elements 15. The only thing that's different in here from previous versions and what I'll be showing you is just the buttons down here for the styles. The effects, filters, and styles, those were tabs across the top up here in earlier versions. Now there are buttons at the bottom. That's the only difference. Okay, we'll start off here. File, New, and we'll do a blank file. I have my set for the default Photoshop elements size, which is six inches wide by four inches tall at 300 pixels per inch, which is a standard printing resolution. Choose OK, and there we go. All right, the first thing to do is to give this a background, background gradient. Notice that my window is a floating window in here. If your window comes in like that, you, may, you can do it like this if you want to, Doctor. it doesn't matter for this video. But if you want it floating, which is like this, just go up to Edit, Preferences, and General, and make sure that you have these two checkboxes checked. Allow floating documents in expert mode and enable floating document window docking. Make sure those are checked. I always have it set up this way. And then you can dock the window like that or pull the tab down and float the window. It makes it a lot easier for doing things like the background gradient. Okay, for our background gradient, go to the gradient tool right here. Click on the gradient and you can then set up a custom gradient. Now I began with the default foreground and background gradient right there. Notice mine are white to black. Let me just cancel that for a second. The, def the standard is like this, black to white. We'll start off right there, black to white. And just like that. So that's your basic setting. So I want to have black on the left hand side. That's fine. On the right hand side, click on this little square right there. That's the color stop. Click on that. And then over here, you have the color picker right there. And I set mine at kind of a dark blue value. And what I use, I'll put it right down here as a hexadecimal color. I used 0505F1 right there. But anything in the middle in here of the blues will be fine up towards the right hand side. Your full saturation is over here, your full color is over here on the right-hand side, and your full brightness at the top. So somewhere around there in the middle of the blues will be just fine. It doesn't have to be this exact number. But if you want it, 0505F1. Okay, there we go. There's our gradient. Choose OK. I'll now pull the gradient from the top to the bottom. Now, as you pull, of course, you get this kind of line here. Notice that I, I began at outside up here, and I pulled down. Now, if you hold the Shift key down like that, it snaps that to being perfectly vertical. So do it that way. So start just above and go clear down to just off the bottom, and that'll give you a nice even gradient. There we go. Easy enough. Okay, let's go to our Type tool now. And at this point, I can actually dock this. I only needed to have that just for that one motion there. So Type tool, set the color to white. Just like that, white type. Now the type style I'm using is Old English Text MT Regular. You may already have this. Any Old English text will do. You can find these. Just go online and do a search for Old English Text Font. And you'll find that there are lots of downloads on this. Kind of real standard, real basic. I have my size set at 110 points. And my leading, which is the spacing between the lines, at 110 points as well. And I have it set for centered justified. Okay, I'll just click up in here someplace, you know, kind of in the middle of the page like that. And let that come in. There we go. 
type in happy, enter key, holidays, and choose the green check mark. As soon as that's set, we can then just kind of visually place this so it looks good in the middle of the page. This won't be exactly in the middle for a visual look. It should be just a little bit lower than exact so it looks it looks balanced that way. So there we go. There's our happy holidays. We now need to copy this type layer. So let's take your type layer, drag it up to the new layer button right there and copy that layer. Just to the right of that, this, here's a new little groups. If you haven't seen Photoshop Elements 15 yet, this allows you to make groups and combine layers into groups. Real cool tool right there. We're not going to be using it, but I just kind of wanted to point that out. It's one of the nicest new features here in version 15. Okay, so we made a copy of that by dragging it to the new layer button. Right click on that where the name is and choose Simplify Layer. There we go. So, so far easy. Now leave the text down below visible. It's a real subtle thing. I'll show you what we're seeing. It gives you just a little bit of a white outline later on. Just leave that one visible. Okay, go up here. We're now going to be applying a style. In Photoshop Elements 15, come down to the Styles button down here. In 14 and earlier, click on the Effects tab and then click on the Styles tab. So it's the tabs will be up here at the top instead of at the bottom. Only difference. Okay, Styles. And then from the drop down, choose Wow Chrome right there. And choose the first one. It's the standard Wow Chrome beveled edge option right there. And just double click on that. And it applies that chrome effect. So it's kind of a silver or a lead or kind of a pewter look almost. But it gives you all this kind of nice, interesting highlights and so forth. That does the whole metallic thing for you right there. That one little option. Real easy. Okay, back to layers. We now need to apply color onto this to give it that gold tone. We'll do that on a new layer. Make a new layer right here. And we'll fill this layer with a yellow color. So go over here to the color picker. Choose the foreground color right there. And we want to have kind of a kind of a yellow orange, kind of light orange up here. Now the one that I chose, let me just go ahead and we'll put this one in for you is FCDC00. Zero zero. So FCDC00. Zero zero. But again, it's just at kind of the top here. If you go up, you know, red, orange, right there it goes from orange to yellow. Right at, at that transition right there, orange to yellow right there, and upper right-hand corner. But any anything right around in there will do fine. Choose OK. I think it's just this kind of like a light orangish yellow. Let's now grab the paint bucket and click anywhere in here. It fills that whole layer with that color. Now, go to the blending modes, change the blending mode down to color. This applies that color onto everything underneath. Now, it colors the letters, it also colors the background as you see. So, we need to fix that background. Come back down to the regular text here, the Happy Holidays with a big T on it. Grab the magic wand and click outside here, outside the text someplace. Now I have mine with the, where it says contiguous down here, unchecked. Make sure that's not checked. Tolerance doesn't matter. It's probably at 32, doesn't matter. But make sure that this is unchecked, very important. We now need to invert this selection. So go up here to select and inverse. Now just the letter is selected. Let's go back to our orange, yellow orange layer. And with that selected, click on that button right there. This is the add layer mask. It takes that selection and makes it into a layer mask. And there we go. There's our type. So it's now only applying this orange yellow color onto the type itself. Now if I show and hide the Happy Holidays text, you can see it right there. Just a slight outlining with that showing. So that's why I left that one showing. It makes the letters look just a little bit better. Okay, now the lettering is a little bit dark still. So go up here to our, our lettering layer. That's this one. And we'll be putting an adjustment layer right in here. So go up to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and you want Levels, the top one right there. And where it says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask, check that and choose OK. And it applies 
the levels control to just the white lettering layer. Now notice we have our, what's called a histogram here. All of the values are way over here on the right hand side. They're all bunched up in the you know, white over here and real light in there. Take the white control and pull it down like that just, just past all that stuff. So just past that, so white is over here. So it starts here, pull it over here like that, and it makes the lettering really bright. There we go. So there's the lettering all taken care of. We now need to put in our snowflakes in the background. It's kind of a fun little step. Come down to the background layer. Click on the new layer button right there. Here's our new layer. I'm going to call this one Snowflakes 1. These will be our small snowflakes. Over here to your color, click on color and set this to white. Just click in the middle someplace and drag the upper left hand corner like that. Sets it up pure white. Let's now go to the paintbrush. And in the paintbrush, yours is going to most likely look like this. It'll say default brushes and 135, whatever. Change this to assorted brushes. It'll drop down right there. Here's all of your brushes. Now if we scroll down, I'm using the wheel on my mouse right now. If I scroll down, we'll see a snowflake down here in just a moment. There it is. Snowflake, there's a 20 underneath it. That's the size of the brush. Double click on that and that sets that snowflake. Set the size here for 80 pixels, 80 px, and we need to adjust the settings. Go over here to brush setting, click on that, and where it says scatter, go clear to the top at 100, and where it says spacing, bring this up almost to the top. I want to have it at about 400 on the spacing. So fade zero, hue jitter zero, scatter 100%, and spacing 400. And then you can just click upside to close that. Now what that does is you can see there's the snowflake. If I click now, it gives me a bunch of random snowflakes just like that, kind of spaced around. So just click a few times. Don't do too many. You want to have a lot of that blue showing still. Just click a few like that and just have some kind of scattered snowflakes. Okay, there's our snowflake one. Let's now set the opacity for that layer to 25% and hit the enter key. There we are. That's our first layer. Let's do another one of these, make a new layer, and I'll rename this snowflakes too. There we go. Change the size here to 160 so that the snowflakes are twice as big. There we go. And just do, you know, three or four of those, just like that. Set this one to 50% and hit the Enter key. And there we go. There's kind of our, our random snowflake background. Now yours won't match this exactly because it the brush settings make it random. So they can just kind of, you know, spaced all over the place. But there we go. There's our basic background snowflakes. Now let's improve the type. Go back to this layer here. This is our main type layer. Notice that there's an effect on there. The FX, that's what does all this kind of fancy metallic stuff in here. Let's work on that. Go up to Layer and Layer Style, Style Settings. And all I want to do here is go to the Drop Shadow setting, increase that to 100%, and bring the distance out just a little bit more. Maybe about 25 it just brings that shadow out just a little bit further. You can bring the size down just a bit. I'm thinking maybe about 20, 21. So it's a little harder, a little, little darker. Just kind of increases that drop shadow. And choose OK. All right, last thing to do is to put our highlights on here. So we're just about finished. So with the highlights, I want those, let's put those above this top layer. Let's click on the top layer, make a new layer above that. And these will be the highlights. Here we go, highlights. Let's go back to our brush. And let's go back here. We're still in the assorted brushes. Now scroll down on assorted brushes and see right here, this thing is called Starburst Small. There's a 50, that's the size underneath. So click on that one. Double click sets that in. And we don't want to be doing anything on the brush settings. It should be all standard. So you want it at 0, 0, and 0 here. 0, 0, 0, that's fine. Don't worry about spacing. We're not going to be doing anything with that. So with this, let's set the size at 200. 
200 pixels, there we go, everything else stays the same. You see there's the size of that starburst. And what I want to do is I want to put one on top of each letter, like that, and then one on the bottom of the A, A's and the O. So let's find a spot over here someplace. Tap it three times like that. If you have a matching letter, match your location. So here's the other H, one, two, three. Let's go to the A, I'll do it right here. One, two, three. Come down, match it on this A. One, two, three, then we have our P's. I think I'll do it on this side, one, two, three, right there, and match the P's like that. Do it on the Y over here, one, two, three. And on the O, put it right there. One, two, three, let's do it right here on the L, one, two, three and top of the I, and just up here, maybe right here on the D, two, three, and the Y. Again, match that Y, and S right here, one, two, three, and on the bottom of the A's and O's, just to have a bit of additional stuff in here, same thing, like that, like that, and like that. And there we go. That's how to do the Happy Holidays. Pretty fast, as you can see, real fast, real quick and easy little card, but a lot of fun. Now, if you want to make this into a card, if you go to the description in this video, you'll see a link in there for how to actually set this up as a card. Okay, there you go. That is the Happy Holidays Quick Gold Text Effect. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com. You can share this video with your friends and coworkers. Just click on share and then click on the social media buttons. Feel free to comment on my videos. I try to answer all comments as quickly as I can.